and welcome to Faith Touch. I'm Apostle Falman A. Ferguson. It is a joy and a delight that you're able to tune into our program once again. Well, I want to decree that this is your time and your season for the glory of God to be revealed in you. Well, I am excited about what God has been doing right here in the house of UFM, and I'm excited about what he's about to do. Now listen, I want you to call a friend, tell a neighbor, Faith Touch is on the air. I want you to sit back and watch this message. I believe it's going to indeed impact your life. I'll be right back with you after this short message. God bless you. Now today I'm going to use for a subject matter. I'm going to use to, for a subject matter, now what? Now what? Deuteronomy chapter 1. These are the words which Moses spoke to all Israel on this side of Jordan in the wilderness, in the plain opposite Sup, between Paran, Tophel, Laban, Hazrat, and Dezabah. Dazaha. Verse number two. It is eleven days' journey from Horab by the mount by the way of Mount Seir to Kadash Bernia. Verse number three. Now it came to pass in the fortieth year. Everybody shout fortieth year. 40th year. Where are we now? Are we are we in the fortieth year? All right, just like us, uh, something is happening. Now it came, everybody shout, it came to pass. Or you, you, you. I need to tell somebody, brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter how long it takes. I don't care how long it takes. I don't care how far away you are. Whatever God is destined to, for you must come to pass. Are you still in the room? Touch somebody and tell them, neighbor, everything concerning you must come to pass. Oh, you all stay with me. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere today. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm calling this my Independence Day address. Now it came to pass in the 40th year, in the 11th month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spoke to the children of Israel, according to all that the Lord had given him as commandment to them. After he had killed Sion, oh Jesus, king of the Amorites, Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, your enemies must die. Oh, Father, help me, Holy Ghost. After he killed Sion, king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Hashban, and all king of Bashan, who dwelt at Astorop in Idri, Idri. Verse number five. On this side of Jordan in the land of Moab, Moses began to explain this law, saying, let's go. The Lord our God has spoke, the Lord our God spoke to us in Haran. What did he say? Saying, you have dwelt long enough at this mountain. Oh, Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you've dwelt long enough. At this mountain my brothers and sisters my brothers and sisters I wish to pause here before I read the rest of the text I wish to pause here because I, I got a feeling I ain't gonna be able to come back my brothers and sisters everybody in life experiences a now what I found out in life that even when uh, we are suffering from failures we get to a place in our lives when we encounter failures in our lives, the question arises, now what? I've also found that there are times in your life when you will have a high, having accomplished something, <laughs> having done something perhaps that have impressed someone. And yet, I've, I was amazed by the fact that even in accomplishment, the question is still asked, now what? I wish to say to us today, my brothers and sisters, I believe that as a country, we are at a now what situation. 
The text, my brothers and sisters, uh, begins with Moses rehearsing uh, the history of their journey. God who had chosen Moses to deliver his people from bondage to the promised land. God selected, handpicked Moses, a man who himself was uh, 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 trained and educated in Pharaoh's house. But a man who made a decision one day that that was not his destiny. That he would rather suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy pleasure for a season. I say to everybody in this room that there comes a season in your life when you face the now what question that you will have to make a precise decision on which turn you're going to make in life. Moses, my brothers and sisters, uh, was given the direction by God to go into Egypt, the same place that he fleed, to go back to Egypt and to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Because, brothers and sisters, the time of fulfillment had come for the children of Israel as God had promised Abraham that they would be taken into bondage for 430 years and at a set time, those people would be delivered out of bondage and returned to the place of promise that God had spoken to him in the past. Now, in the, in the process of God removing uh, the people of, of, of Israel from the land of Egypt, the land of hardship, the land where they were terrified, the land where they were placed in hardship, the land where they were not allowed to dream, my brothers and sisters, on the way out of Egypt, they began to carry Egypt with them. No wonder the saying that says, you can take a man out of the island, but you can't take the island out of a man. My brothers and sisters, I wish to suggest to some of us that Egypt uh, is a place of bondage that has kept us for a long time, and Egypt is fighting to keep its place. The children of Israel, the children of Israel out of, uh, out of Egypt had seen the wonders of God had seen the wonders of God. God had given them much wonders even before they were delivered out of Egypt. You all remember the signs and the plagues, the signs and wonders that God sent just in, uh, to encourage Pharaoh to obey his word, even though he told Moses that I would harden the heart of Pharaoh that he would not let you go. But yet God hardened his heart because it was that as the word of the Lord declared, declared it was for God's glory that God allowed the heart of Pharaoh to be hardened. So my brothers and sisters as uh, the children of Israel um, experienced the exodus uh, out of Egypt on their way to the promised land there are some things that began to occur. Uh, the scripture shows us that the children of Israel begin to complain. I suppose that, th th that they were like uh, can you just offer me my little tray? I suppose that they were, they were like the bees. They were like the bees that were in trap. In trap, trying to get free. Trying to get free, but every time they would try to get free, they would hit the lid. They would hit the lid. And after a while, even though freedom had come, even though freedom had come to them, even though the lid was removed, they still had not discovered that the lid had been removed. Why? Because they had been conditioned, my brothers and sisters, to think in, in a way. They had been conditioned to see in a way. They had been conditioned to hear in a way. And so even now, even though that they uh, uh, were seeing signs and wonders, they could not bring themselves in compliance to what they were seeing, hearing, or even experiencing. Oh, I'm going somewhere. And so the Moses, as he rehearsed uh, the transition out of Egypt, he, he, he rehearsed uh, on the story and he said to them, he said to them, he says, the journey that we were taking should have only been 11 days. It should have only been 11 days. Now they are at the entrance of the promised land, my brothers and sisters, at the entrance of the promised land, and he begins to speak to them, and he says, I got a word for you. He says, God spoke to us while we were 
at Mount Herod. Put it back on the screen for me. God spoke to us. Uh, 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 to us in Herod. And said you have dwelt long enough at this mountain. Now my brothers and sisters. Uh, I, need you, I need you to grab this. There's one thing for somebody, a human being. It's one thing for your brother. It's one thing for your pastor. It's one thing for your, your husband or your wife or your children or your boss man to tell you you have dwelt long enough at this mountain. It's one thing. That's one area. My brothers and sisters, you may determine when, when they speak and tell you you've dwelt long enough at a mountain, you may determine who do you think you're talking to. Don't tell me I dwell, I've been here long enough at this mountain because you don't know what I've been through. You don't understand. You don't understand even where I'm going. And brothers and sisters, you can comfort yourself at a place uh, that's not been designed for you because of all the things you have been through. But it's another thing when God, not, not Moses, not your pastor, not your bishop, when God says to you, you have dwelt long enough at this mountain. That's another thing. Why? Because God is all-knowing. God is sovereign. God never makes a mistake. And when God speaks, there is none who can argue with God. Brothers and sisters, uh, God says... Uh, uh, you have dwelt long enough at this mountain. What had happened? The, a mountain, my brothers and sisters, uh, a mountain can represent two kinds of things. A mountain can represent a high in your life. It can represent a place of celebration. And even at a place of celebration, we have people who come to a place in life where they are stuck. Please hear me. There are people who can come to a mountain of celebration and everybody's celebrating you and uh, it gets to your head and all of a sudden you stop striving because you're being celebrated. That's why I came to tell somebody in here today, listen, you can't fall prey to the enemy making you feel good because sometimes the enemy will make you feel good outside of destiny. Oh, y'all ain't talking. A mountain, I said, can be a place. Notice I started with a place of celebration. But a mountain can also be a place of obstacle. How do I know? Jesus says, I say unto you, if uh, um, whoever says to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. Oh, God, if you believe, whatever you believe, without doubt, it shall be done. Brothers and sisters, there are mountains in our lives uh, that have come in our lives. And for some people, those mountain represents obstacles that have kept them from achieve or achieving or obtaining what God wants them to obtain. The children of Israel came to a place, uh, a place where they experienced God. And then instead of moving to the place that God ultimately had for them, this is what they began to do. For 30, watch this, uh, you've you got to see what I'm talking about now because, uh, l let me give you a little background, let me do this. Uh, 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 in Numbers chapter 13, in Numbers chapter 13, God spoke to, to Moses and God said to them, God says, I want you to select 12 leaders for me. Select 12 leaders for me and this is what I want you to do. I want you to send them out to spy the land, the land that I promise you. The land that I told you I'm going to give to you. And, and the Bible declares that these 12 leaders went up in the land and saw the land, picked the fine grapes, ate of it, and uh, had a fabulous time. But in the process of eating the grapes, they saw some things that caused them, my brothers and sisters, to be terrified. The scripture declared that they saw giants. They saw giants, and, uh, and so in their report, when they came back to Moses, the Bible declares that these men came back to Moses, and Moses started to ask for a report. And these men came back, uh, brothers and sisters, and, uh, and ten of them began to stir up the crowd. They said, we went in, and we saw, we saw what took place. We saw what Moses said. The land is just like he said. It's a fruitful place. It's a land that's flowing. Yay, with milk and honey. The grapes are in season, man. It's harvest time now. But brothers and sisters, they had a problem. They say, but, but we are not able 
to possess it. Because brothers and sisters, the giants dwell there. And because the giants dwell there, we saw ourselves. We were like grasshoppers in our own eyes. Ain't, ain't it amazing how uh, the majority can stir up a congregation? The Bible declares that the congregation was so stirred. The congregation was so stirred that they decided, my God, we better stone this Moses and Aaron. Get him out of our place. Get him out of here. And let's go on back to Egypt where we had things good. How could it be good when they cried out to the Lord and the Lord saw and heard and the Lord sent a delivery? What are you saying? I'm saying I'm, I'm coming. I'm giving you a background because I'm coming to our nation after I'm done with this. And brothers and sisters, it, the, the word showed me that they, they decided that they were not satisfied with the leadership that God had given them. They were not satisfied. So they cried. Let's go on back and let's, let's go back and let's choose a new leader. And let's go back. The scripture declares that two men paused. Two men paused to silence the congregation that was about to stone Moses and Aaron. Two of them uh, silenced the congregation. Their names were Joshua and Caleb. Two young men and said to the congregation, listen, be careful. Because we are well able. We are well able to possess the land. I don't know about y'all, but brothers and sisters, you gonna have to answer your now what uh, question on today. We are well able to possess the land. So the Bible declares that even in that uh, stir, they, uh, after they heard this, they decided within themselves, well, if this is the case, then let's go on up and let's go on up and let's possess this land. But, uh, but before this took place, the scripture says, that Moses fell on his face and he cried to the Lord. And God answered him. And God says, tell them. Tell them because they didn't believe what I say. Tell them, tell them because they did not believe what I say. For every year that I, uh, uh, for every year they were in the, uh, in the land for 40 days, spying out the land. For every day I'm going to give them a year. For every day, I'm going to give them a year. Lord, have mercy. I wonder why somebody or some folk are behind time. Could it be that God has given you a day, a year for every day you disobeyed him? Oh, man. I just said something. Could it be that God has given you another year for your disobedience? And the Bible says that, 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 that God says because of this, you will wander in the wilderness for 40 years. A year for a day. A year for a day. They decided, well, we have sinned against God. And so let's go up and possess. Let's go ahead and take the land back. Moses said, don't go up. Because if you all go up, God ain't going with you. You're not going to have success. They still decided, we going. We going because we done talk and we done repent and God going to work for us because we bad like that. But on the way up, my brothers and sisters, they were defeated by the enemies. They were defeated and beat back down. And God spoke these words to uh, Moses. He says, tell them. Tell them that none of them are going to enter. None of that generation. Only those, my brothers and sisters, only two is going to enter. Their name, Caleb and Joshua, because, because they believed in my word. They believed in what I spoke. I came to tell somebody something. We are at the verge, my brothers, of manifestation. And you've got to make sure in this time and in this season that you believe the word that God is speaking. Because in this season, my brothers and sisters, you will not be able to walk in the supernatural increase and multiplication if we as a nation are not prepared to hear God. I move back up. So the brothers and sisters, they continued. They continued trying to find a way. 
trying to find a way, trying to find a way. But for 38 years now, they were circling this one mountain, this one place. Brothers and sisters, can I tell you something? As I was studying this text, the Lord showed me something. The Lord showed me something that when, when you circle one place, when you circle one place, soon or later, it ought to become familiar to you. Oh, Father, help me, Jesus. It ought to come familiar to you. But what, here's the tragedy. They were circling a mountain, Deacon Cardi, and it did not seem familiar. They were circling a mountain and still believed that they were going somewhere. They had the shout. They had the praise. Oh, Lord, help me. They had their colors, but they were going nowhere. They were locked in a circle, going nowhere. Let me bring this to the nation. Let me bring this to the nation before I move the voice on. And the, and the Lord showed me, he says, like the children of Israel, the Bahamas, he showed me like, like Israel, the Bahamas has been in a circle. The Bahamas has been in a circle. You only hearing what I tell you. Sure enough, I researched and I had the speech and I don't feel the, I'm, I'm not going to be able to go uh, past it now. Uh, I, I pulled up the speech from the right honorable uh, or from the deputy prime minister. The deputy prime minister, he said some great things um, concerning our nation. Uh, just, uh, just let me flow now. Uh, and he talked about uh, he talked about the achievement of the nation. He talked about the the hunger of the nation uh, back in '73 and the desire of the people to experience an independent nation. The desire for the people to experience this freedom. To experience this freedom. Forty years, I look back and I saw something. Forty years, this Bahamas has progressed. It has progressed. In a tremendous way. Even though some of us would disagree with the advancement of our nation. I still believe much has been accomplished. But as, uh, when you look back, one only has to look and see. If you look, uh, um, uh, we, have, we have COB. Are you all here? We have our own college in the, in the, in the country. When one looks back. We have our own defense force. All of these that came forth in the last 40 years. Are you still in the room? Uh, 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 when you look back, uh, we, have, we have become, um, or we had become number one in this region in tourism. We have become number one in the banking industry. Is that not so? We had become number one. Number one in this region. But yet the Lord showed me. He says, even in this, we've gone in circles. Because now we have people who are who've been circling and asking themselves, uh, they've been circling, and and uh, and and even in this process, there are people who feel like somebody owed them something. Ain't nobody hearing what I just said. Somebody owes them something. And so our nation has been in a fight. We've been in a fight for survival because brothers and sisters, people don't know who they are and whose they are. With all the success that we have had, with all the highs that we have had, the question of now what is this? Now what? Well, I hope you've enjoyed that message insert on today. And if you'd like that message in its entirety, please call our media department at 341-0502. I assure you, they'll get it right out to you. Listen, I also want to encourage you. Neighbors, if you do not yet know Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, Will you give him an opportunity today? I want to decree that this is your time and your season. Yes, Until next time, we want to invite you to be a part of us. Come and worship with us in any one of our services. I look forward to seeing you and shaking hands with you. And I bless God for what he will do in your life. Until next time, this is Apostle Falman A. Ferguson saying, this is your time and your season for a supernatural increase and manifestation. God bless you and I love you.
Hello friends, this is Apostle Salman A. Ferguson giving you a special invitation for In Hot Pursuit 2013 right here August the 26th to the 28th in this beautiful sanctuary located on number 126 Fire Trail Road East. I want you to know this year the anointed speakers are Bishop Henry Fernandez all the way from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Pastor Samuel Cornish from Abaco and Bishop Godfrey Williams from Freeport, Grand Bahama. Listen, these services are services you don't want to miss. So plan to be with us from Grand Bahama to Inagua. Wherever you're watching us, make plans to be with us and we look forward to seeing you. So until that time, I'm saying it's your time for a new beginning. God bless you. Thank you for listening to our program today. For prayer, counseling, or encouragement, please call us, 341-0502, or send us an email, ufm at bahamas.net.bs. We would be delighted to hear from you. Wishing to join us? Meet us at our sanctuary on Fire Trail Road East every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. for our divine worship service. For all other service times and broadcast schedules, please visit our website, www.ufmi.org. On behalf of our senior pastor, Apostle Falman Ferguson, and the members of United Faith Ministries International, thank you for sharing with us. Join us next week right here on this station, and may the Word of God richly dwell in you.